We are going to study about the ALD, the precursor and the reactant in this chapter. So, uh, as I explained in the previous chapter, the precursor and the reactants are pretty important the chemicals uh, that is to transform to the ALD deposited material in the film form. So, um, to make a uh, very good the ALD process, uh, there are a few the requirements for the precursor. Uh, so the first one, so the, all of the precursor have to be uh, self-limited, uh, has the, the property about the self-limited adsorption that easily the speaking, that means the no self-decomposition. So as I told you, be explained the before, so we have, well, there is no, well, no reaction between the precursor and then the other precursor molecule. So that is the basics for the surface self-saturated reaction. But if the temperature is very high, the precursor itself thermally decompose uh, uh, by itself. So probably they can react with the other precursor molecule because the ligand already detached from the precursor and then probably can be changed to very active uh, active the phase so that can be the reactive video trailer. but in the ALD process window and ALD the temperature for the ALD process the all of the precursor should be in very stable and then uh, adsorb on the surface uh, through the self-saturated reaction. So this is the pretty much important thing. And the second one is the volatility. So typically we just uh, uh, like uh, put the precursor as a, the vapor phase form, vapor phase molecule from the canister to the chamber. So that means all of the precursor should be vaporized very easily and then transfer to the chamber uh, through the uh, manifold line. So the, all of the precursor should be very, not super volatile, but should be very volatile uh, for the easy the trans, uh, transport from the canister to the chamber. And then the third third one is aggressive reaction and a fast saturation and a full reaction. That means once the precursor reacts with the counter reactant, the reaction should be very fast, and there is no uh, barriers the byproduct. And then the fast reaction and a very full reaction. That means the delta G should be very uh, small. It's down to below like zero, and then the very negative value. So that means the uh, we have the aggressive reaction. And then the fourth one is the no dissolution into the film. So sometimes the some uh, sometimes the, the precursor is dissoluted into the film and then the film composition will be changed. So the precursor basically do not uh is not is not uh, dissolved in the film anymore. And then no etching of the film uh, or the substrate. Sometimes the byproduct of the reaction or the precursor etched out the surface or already deposited the film, that, that is a very disadvantage for the deposition of the thin film. But interesting point is, this is the uh, very important mechanism for the ALE, the atomic layer etching process. So because the atomic layer etching process, that is exactly opposite reaction of the ALD process. So this is the, uh, that was used to be at the beginning of the ALE, uh, the research field. Okay, let me explain the vapor pressure of the pressure. Basically, if for example, once you get a new precursor and you just put the precursor into the canister and then just heat it up to increase the vapor pressure, and then the vaporized precursor molecule is transported to uh, the chamber. So the important thing is we have to know what temperature we have to heat it up the canister. So that is the first question. So the setting temperature means uh, how much the vapor pressure do you want for the, uh, the precursor system. So how we can estimate the vapor pressure 
uh, at specific temperature. So to calculate that, we have to use the Clausius Cly pattern equation. For the better understanding, you have to definitely go back to the uh, chapter one and then take a look at the uh, vapor phase equilibrium between the solid phase and the vapor phase or the liquid phase and the vapor phase. Basically, as I explained before, the Clausius Cly pattern equation is a uh, it looks like this and then vapor pressure is a function of the temperature there are some few uh, the questions but still the graph is composed of uh, some as a function of uh, the temperature so uh, once you get this question like uh, the enthalpy and then gas con we only know gas constant and then this constant so if you put this a uh, question if you know a temperature we can calculate what is the vapor pressure of that material at specific temperature so how we can obtain that we have two unknown questions that means it, this equation looks like this this is the first order of the equation and then we don't know a and b how we can obtain that so we have to have two different value x1 and y1 x2 y2 if you know uh, one uh, two pairs of uh, this value you can obtain the a and b from this equation so once you get this equation you definitely know like ln p equal the a minus one over t uh, plus b so we, because we know this number, we can plot it, and then this is the plotted, and then so uh, at specific temperature, we can measure, uh, we can calculate the vapor pressure. So how we can know these the two pair values? So you can just search it in the papers or the MSDS or some any chemical properties from the company. So there are many different type of the uh, the precursor in the ALD the research. So the probably the oxide metal oxide precursor are the most the famous and then common precursor in the ALD research. So there are some different type of the reaction, ligand protonation, ligand combustion, and an alkyl halide elimination. For example, if you use the water, so this is the uh, ligand protonation. And then zirconium tetrachloride is changed to zirconium oxide by using the water counter reactant or if you use the oxygen or the ozone or oxygen radical from the plasma and then TMA three material the aluminum the ozone is changing to change it to uh, the aluminum oxide and then uh, for example uh, if you use uh, the zirconium tetrachloride and then silicon the alkyl oxide and then change it to the zirconium silicate so there are some six different type of the precursor halide and then alkoxide and a beta diketonate amino complex alkyl or cyclopentadiene so the many precursor used for the ALD system but the, all of the precursor can be categorized to these the six different types and then this is the metal well actually compared to the metal oxide ald the metal ald is more challenging because we have to remove the, all of the ligand from the, uh, the precursor so different type of that the metal precursor plus the reducing agent for example the tungsten hexafluoride can be reduced to the metallic tungsten using the silent SiH4 or sometimes metal precursor plus the oxidant. Typically, noble metal can be deposited by the uh, oxygen, like oxidant, because that is the combustion reaction. The lucium cyclopentadiene is changed to metal lucium using the oxygen. Or well, metal precursor, oxidant, and a reducing agent again. This is a very interesting point. So, metal precursor is going to metal oxide. And then using hydrogen, that is also reduced the uh, the metal, pure metal after the oxidation. Nitride. So nitride, we have to use some nitrogen source in the counter reactant. 
So metal precursor, TiCF4, and ammonia, and then change it to the TIN. The metal precursor or the nitrogen source and then reducing agent. So this is like uh, the plasma reactant. And metal precursor or nitrogen source reducing agent, additional reducing agent. So this is the another example for that. So precursor for the metal and nitride ALD, like different type, halide, halide precursor like a TiCl4, SiCl4. Typically the halide precursor has a really high the reactivity and a really high vapor pressure. But as you know, the halide precursor is very corrosive. So if you use the halide precursor in your chamber, so you have to be careful that your chamber is a lot of rust after like a lot of the ALD cycles. So cyclopentadienyl cyclo compound, like there are some very different type of the cyclopentadienyl uh, the compound like a metallocene, leucinocene, nickelocene, cobaltocene, and ferrocene, different type of that. That was has been developed for the CBD, metal CBD process before. And then uh, acetamide precursor, and then cobalt, iron, nickel, copper, beta diketonate type precursor, and alkyl type precursor, alkyl amide precursor, TD map, and then TE map, and then like uh, TEMAS. There are some different type of the precursor. Those precursor are actively used for the high K, high K metal oxide the deposition of ALD. Okay, let's keep uh, moving to the plasma counter reactant part. So in the counter reactant exposure step. Sometimes we use the plasma as a counter reactant for higher the uh, reaction energy. So, um, well, typically we can add up some more energy through the heating up system, like a heater system, that is the thermal energy. But sometimes the thermal energy quite not enough to obtain that reaction. So sometimes we need to do we need to put the more energy into the vacuum chamber. But as you know, that is the very difficult. So the most effective way is the electric field. And then once you make the electric field and once you apply the electric field on your vacuum chamber system, as a consequence, the plasma is generated inside the system. That means you have very energetic the ion and the radical inside uh, your ALD system that uh, reacts uh, the precursor molecule very actively. So this is the very easy systemic diagram of advantage or the unique property of the plasma counter reactant. So if you think about if you use like a thermal energy only, you that means you use the gas phase counter reactant. So this is a counter reactant, and a counter reactant probably reduce or oxidize only one precursor. Probably the reactivity is not very high. So after that probably precursor or job on this surface only. But if you use the high energy uh, using the plasma, probably because the reactivity is much higher than the gas phase counter reactant, the, year, uh, the precursor is changing to the oxide or the, uh, the metal after the exposure to the plasma counter reactant. So that is the four uh, the atom is changed to the deposited material and then the four atom on the four atom the another like four uh, the metal precursor can be can absorb on that surface that means if you use the plasma counter reactant basically we can expect the higher growth rate because the plasma counter reactant has higher reactivity so we can expect the higher growth rate so another uh, the advantage of the plasma counter reactant is we put the more energy for the fast and then very clean reaction inside the ALD uh, the chamber system. So if we have like temperature curve uh, in the gross rate versus the gross temperature, so if you use the plasma, probably the reaction this curve is extended to the at low temperature region because we put more energy through the plasma foam and as i expected the in the previous uh, the page so this is the typical saturation curve but if you use the plasma because so this is uh, uh, 
the more oxidized and the more reduced of the precursor molecule, we can expect the boost up of the growth rate if you use the plasma contour mutant. So this is the example. So we use the TDMA for the half new oxide ALD, we use the two different types, water and oxygen plasma. So this is the water uh, half new oxide ALD process. And then this is the uh, oxygen plasma, like boost up. Uh, the growth rate versus temperature curve still this curve is pretty much slow but if you use like oxygen plasma the uh, the curve is shift up to the higher growth rate region so that is the very typical one so uh, one advantage of the plasma uh, counter reactant like a PALD plasma minus the ALD. So we can have the plasma, we can do the plasma pre-treatment and then they, uh, it affects the nucleation delay, nucleation inhibition, nucleation incubation. So that means the one of the reasons for the nucleation incubation is the surface needs to take a time to change from original surface to some other surface which is very active for the ALD, the nucleation. So if you use the very high the plasma uh, radical and counter reactants, so we can very easily quickly change it to the, our surface state to the very active site. So this is the previous curve, or this is the, the other previous curve. Maybe change it to very linear growth if you use the PALD system. That is the very uh, the important uh, advantage of the plasma in SDLD. Sometimes so before right before our thermal ALD process with our plasma counter reactant if you your chamber has the plasma capability we can treat we can change our surface states right before the, our thermal ALD process so this is the one disadvantage of the plasma counter reactant so this is the uh, some quick uh, the md simulation uh, during the plasma radical or ion bombardment on the surface. Once we get only one ion from the plasma, probably there are really, really huge damage on it. So because of that, if you make the plasma uh, PALD uh, ALD film, so we can make, we can find some structural defect inside the film because there are some really huge the potential drop and then the ion, uh, so plus ion, ion is accelerated. They can transfer a lot of huge amount of the momentum transfer to the surface. That is the really uh, the disadvantage of the plasma. So if you use some different type of plasma, I will explain that. But typically the plasma has like a thirteen point uh, thirty six uh, the megahertz. Uh, frequency that is the RF plasma but if you increase the plasma frequency we can change the plasma a little bit so this is the uh, the uh, experimental data this is the RF plasma and different power and if you increase the plasma frequency from 13 point megahertz to like 6 60 the megahertz so the frequency, so the plasma density is increased. Plasma density means the number of the radicals and ion in the plasma. So if the reactive species like radical ions is increased, the reactivity is increased. So uh, to get like higher growth rate of the ALD process, the higher plasma density is pretty much important for that. And then this is the, the electron temperature and then this is the VHF and then RF. So with increasing the plasma frequency, the electron temperature is decreased. So that means, this is the schematic drawing, in the VHF, higher plasma frequency. So we can have the more radical, more active species. But one species has lower kinetic energy. This is the pretty low, but this is a very small. So well, the, the damage from the plasma radical and ion that is coming from the higher kinetic 
energy of the each radical and an ion. So we just increase the boom of the number of uh, the plasma reactive species. And then at the same time, we can decrease the kinetic energy of itself. So that is the really the important for the real PELD process. Well, basically, because we have the higher plasma, the frequency, so we can expect the increase of the growth rate. So this is the increase of the growth rate. And then, so we decrease, we suppress the kinetic energy of the plasma frequency. So we can have like a really uniform and then conformal film. So if you use like a plasma, PALD for like a three-dimensional structure, the typically the conformality is not pretty good because the radical and ions are recombined uh, during the penetrating into the the bottom of the uh, bottom of this very narrow trench hole or uh, three-dimensional structure. So, but in the VHF plasma system, the higher frequency plasma system, because we have the much larger number of uh, the plasma uh, reactive species, we still have quite enough plasma species, which is the down to reach it down the bottom of the, our uh, the structure. So that means we can still have very high reactivity even inside at the bottom of this very deep hole or the trench. And one this one another advantage of if you use like a PALD process, typically two or three nanometer thickness of interlayer is commonly formed because we have very reactive oxidants as a plasma and they make really big bombardments on the original surface. They can penetrate into uh, the substrate and they react with each other and they oxidize and they just change it to interfacial layer. So uh, the VHF plasma system, almost uh, no interlayer. That means the uh, damage, uh, like bombardment from the damage is pretty low. So this is the really the important the alternative for the current PLD system. Also, I want to introduce the other counter reactants. So oxygen, nitrogen, and then ammonia, hydrogen, water. That is a very common and then typically use uh, the plus, uh, counter reactant. But so sometimes we use like a higher reactivity counter reactant or some other uh, elements containing the counter reactant. For example, ozone, uh, hydroperoxide, water and hydrogen plasma, ammonia, ammonium ion, and then water and then pyridine. And then so this is the uh, much e mo most easy example. So if you use like oxygen, the growth rate is pretty low, but if you use like ozone counter reactant for the platinum LD, you can obtain like a better growth rate. So as I explained before, if you use the like higher reactivity counter reactant, the GPC or the growth rate is increased because the reactivity is increased, that means the larger number of the precursor molecules change it to deposit material. So this is a very typical one. And then if you use like a ozone, so we can deposit down almost down to 100 degrees C. That is a very good. And then the other, the interesting, the counter reactant is the double counter reactant. First of all, nickel lotion is used for nickel oxide deposition. They use the water deposit to, uh, for deposit, deposit the nickel oxide and a pouch. And then ammonia pl hydrogen plasma is ex exposed to the substrate. And then nickel oxide is changed to metallic nickel film. The interestingly, this six step, uh, the LD process can produce the pure metallic nickel film. There is no oxygen here. So very uniform. This is the uh, very interesting region. And then this is the another example. So they use like a catalyst to decrease down, to increase the reactivity of the precursor and the counter reactant. So they use the pyridine, and then pyridine has the lone electron pair, and then they have very 
uh, highland reactivity and we use the, uh, they use the silicon tetrachloride and water as a counter reactant so pyridine the uh, attract this uh, one hydrogen from the hydroxyl group and then so that helps the adsorption of the silicon tetrachloride on the surface and also the pyridine attract with the water uh, hydrogen of water molecule and that can be very easily react with the uh, chlorine uh, which is the termini uh, uh, the ligand of the silicon precursor because of that they can deposit very good film at even at room temperature is pretty low and then the film saturation can be the observed in the study and then this is the uh, like this is the really good example to show one of the big advantage of ALD so if you change the counter reactant and precursor uh, during the ALD process we may change the film properly a lot so uh, they use DEG, diet zinc, uh, the precursor, and then use the NH4OH as a counter reactant. They want to deposit zinc oxide. At the same time, they want to put the, some small amount of nitrogen into the zinc oxide film as a dopant. So, because the nitrogen is very important dopant to increase the conductivity of the zinc oxide film. So, they found the nitrogen inside zinc oxide film and then the resistivity is decreased and the electron temperature electron concentration is increased and the whole mobility is increased so this is the really good example how we can dope uh, how we can dope some small uh, some specific the material into the film without any like diffusion process or any implantation process just by using the LD process. So this is also very interesting, the approach. And then typically we use the one precursor and then one counter reactant. And then the one counter reactant is typically like hydrogen and oxygen and ammonia. That is the very the simple gas. But this group you use, use the two different the precursor without the counter reactant. One precursor act, uh, react with the other looks like the role of the counter reactant. So they use like the halide precursor and an alkoxide precursor to deposit the uh, aluminum oxide. And then so this is the uh, halide and an alkoxide to deposit aluminum oxide or sometimes halide and alkoxide to deposit silicate film. So this is the pretty the interesting approach. Okay, so so um well if you use the like the different type of the precursor and a new precursor and a new counter reactant, one our big question is so this precursor is can be very easily absorbed, uh, can absorb on the surface or not because the easy absorption that is the strongly affect to the growth rate or a GPC and a high nucleation. So our question is how we can how we can estimate the absorption of the precursor. So to uh, quantitate, to obtain the quantitative result for that, so we use like a theoretical calculation. So that is, we call that uh, the dense functional theory that is the based on the Schrodinger equation. So just by using this density functional theory, so we can calculate every single step, sub step of the absorption process, for example, we have this precursor and that is going to the surface and a fizzy job and then one ligand is uh, detached away and then the other ligand is detached away and then finally this, the metal element is formed on the surface. So by using the DFT calculation, we can obtain the energy level here and the next here, second and then this final stage. So this is the initial state, and then this is a final state. It looks like this, and then this amount is delta E. That means the activation energy. So just by comparing the activation energy to in the two different surfaces, we can estimate. Okay, so this precursor is can be very can very easily absorb on this surface, but not this surface. So that is the really good quantitative 
the uh, data to estimate the ALD process. So this is the really good example. And then we have done the DFT calculation on the ALD platinum. We used the different precursor. Interestingly, HDMP, that is the new precursor. If you use the new precursor, we can deposit very conformal, very uniform film even after 100 cycle. But 100 cycle after using the conventional platinum precursor, the platinum film is not very continuous. Looks like a very island growth. So this is the coverage. So pretty much this precursor, it looks like a more uh, is like more active than this precursor we calculate that this is the initial and the final but for the hdmp the energy barrier is pretty much small but that is the energy barrier for the mcpt the conventional precursor is almost the two times larger than this hdmp case so activation energy is two times uh, like is half of the conventional precursor that means the our kinetic process should be very fast than the conventional one. So that is the real important reason why we can deposit very uniform the platinum film on the surface.